Hello and welcome to another video. A few weeks ago, I traveled from Seattle to Los Angeles via American Eagle on one of their regional affiliates, Compass. Let's see how they did. It's a beautiful March day in Seattle and a perfect day for flying. I had rented a car for this trip and was dropped off by the car rental shuttle downstairs outside baggage claim. Once upstairs, Alaska's presence is definitely known. I had originally planned to travel with Alaska today. You'll see why I didn't in a minute. Alaska has a lot of self-check-in screens if you don't need to check a bag. I stopped to check the locator map to make sure I went through the closest security checkpoint. Once through security at the main terminal, there are plenty of restaurants in the large open area. I read online that I missed the opening of this area by one week. It provides a great view of the runways to do some plane spotting. All right, made it through security, pretty quick and easy. Unfortunately, I was not able to catch anything at the main terminal area, the massive windows, floor to ceiling, but looks like they're doing construction. So maybe I'll go down to the sea gates before I head to my gate, which is D2, to do a little plane spotting because I still have 45 minutes before I board. Maybe a cup of coffee along the way too. Walking through the D gates at SeaTac is basically one long hallway with not a whole lot to see. So my flight on Alaska ended up getting canceled due to an inoperable part. I immediately got on the phone and Alaska's customer service was amazing, but I will let past me tell you all about that. So the update is that Alaska's customer service was able to get me on to an American flight that leaves here in another hour or so, a little late, on an E-175 via Compass, which is their one of their American Eagle affiliates. I will have to get from their American Eagle terminal and catch a bus to Terminal 5, and then from Terminal 5 I'll have to get to Terminal 4 to catch my next flight all in an hour. I wish me luck. Why thank you passed me, and there's today's ride an Embraer E-175 regional jet. This aircraft seats 76 people, so significantly less than the other Airbus A320 and Boeing 737s that fly this route normally. I'll take a moment to ask if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel while you're there. If you hit the bell, you'll get notified as soon as a new video is posted. Once on board, American Eagle has four rows of first class in a 1-2 configuration, while the main cabin has a 2-2 configuration. It may not have an exciting interior, but as a regional jet, it is certainly sufficient. The legroom was a little smaller at 30 inches of pitch, but again, totally fine for a two and a half hour flight. Takeoff was surprisingly bumpy for it being such a beautiful day in Seattle. I apologize for the lack of views as I was not able to choose a window seat. American Eagle, well, really Compass, operating as American Eagle, has very standard tray tables. Meals were not available for purchase on this flight, so I settled for pretzels and coffee. It's a good thing I really needed the coffee because it really wasn't very good. I was hoping for a second beverage service, but that did not happen, unfortunately. There is one forward restroom for first class passengers and one restroom for the main cabin located in the back of the plane. As mentioned in one of our previous videos on the E-175, the restrooms are completely sufficient for this size aircraft. Here's a little view from the very back of the plane so you can get a feel for its size. Enjoy the views as we approach LAX. You can see downtown Los Angeles just beyond the wing and that ginormous winglet. It was a bit bumpy, but safe landing into LAX.
taxied past the aircraft I'd be flying on next, a Dreamliner. I made a video for that flight too, and I've added a link in the description below. American Eagle has its own terminal, which is separated from the main terminals at LAX. You walk outside through this little covered area to get inside this terminal. It sure is busy here. There are two lines for the buses. One line takes you to Terminal 5 and one to Terminal 4, which meant I only had to take the escalator once at Terminal 4 and I was basically at the gate for my next flight. I had a couple of takeaways from this flight. First, Alaska did a great job of getting me on a flight that would allow me to make my connection. Secondly, American's customer service, both at the gate and on the flight, was very lackluster. It felt more like they were doing their job because they had to and not because I actually enjoy it. I'm a huge fan of friendly customer service as it has a huge impact on the entire travel experience. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. What did you think of American Eagle? Have you flown on one of American's regional affiliates before? I'd love to hear what you think. Starting in May, we will be posting a new video to the channel every two weeks. We have a lot of trips coming up this summer, so we'd love for you to join us in the air.